This is undoubtedly one of the most hostile environments you could ever wish to face, and we are a long way from rescue. It's the world's largest expanse of wilderness, an unforgiving continent that's drawn explorers for centuries. An expedition like Antarctic Quest takes years to organise. Food, shelter and everything else they'll need for more than a month on the ice. Coffee. Shipped to the bottom of the world in barrels, then decanted into special ice sleds known as polks, ready for the team's 300 kilometre journey. We have all of our survival equipment, we have our tentage, we have our food, we have our fuel and we have all of our science kit going into eight polks. Each person will bring their own polk with them. They are responsible for that polk. They've got to make sure that all their kit is in there and that we can then get across safely with all of the ropes, climbing gear we need. Then we've got a cranberry berth flapjack. Below deck, the team are packing their food, more than 6,000 calories a day, to fuel them as they drag their polks across a mountainous area known as the Forbidden Plateau. We're planning on needing at least 38 days worth of food, maybe 44 for contingencies. I've started packing up um, a daily food bag so that I can lift a bag out every day and that will be my rations for the day. Inside that bag there is a breakfast, lunch and dinner with pudding. Um, breakfasts are 1,000 calories, um, dinners are 1,500 calories and lunch is 450 calories. We are aiming for 6,500 calories per day, slightly more, slightly less, depending on the size of the person and the team. It's just wonderful to be out in such a remote area, to explore things, to, to be in these wild wilderness places is a real privilege. Um, and also we've got a really important opportunity to contribute to some of the climate change science that, um, that some of the universities we're working with are going through. Clearly. Our, our experiments, our research isn't going to solve climate change, but it's going to help narrow the, the margin of error and narrow the margin of possibility. So I, I just feel I'm really lucky to be able to do it. In the early hours of the morning, with the sun still visible, the ship's inflatable speedboats are lowered and the team are driven ashore to Portal Point. After four years of planning, they finally made it. I didn't really feel like it was going to happen sort of two weeks ago when we were all having a lot of difficulty getting out to uh, France for our training. Um, so I don't think, like, I personally wouldn't let myself believe it was going to happen until I actually put foot on the ice right now. This is the first time it's felt tangible, which is quite nice. And the little penguin over there greeting us was, was pretty ace as well. The Antarctic Peninsula is the northernmost tip of mainland Antarctica, the highest, coldest and windiest continent on Earth, covering an area of five and a half million square miles. The team are heading for an area that's never been explored, Along the way, they'll gather a mass of scientific data designed to help researchers understand the impact climate change and pollution are having here. Now, it may not look it, but the air temperature here in Antarctica has risen by three degrees since the 1950s. That's a rise five times faster than the rest of the globe. The sea temperature here also is warming up. It's risen by a whole degree in half a century. Now, those numbers may seem small, but the effects are huge. Nearly all the glaciers here are now in retreat, and 10,000 square miles of ice has vanished, gone forever. We've been working with a number of universities and organisations, uh, collaborating with them to collect samples, which will then go back to those universities and organisations for assessment. And that data will be transferred into a readout of what's happening on the peninsula in terms of microplastics, uh, the accumulation or the loss of snow, the ice mass balance. Uh, and we'll be looking at weather conditions and seeing how they're changing. Overall, it's to do with climate change and sustainability, though. Before they can set off, the team have to establish a base camp, and that means hauling their polks, some weighing more than 100 kilos, up to a ridge above Portal Point. One of the most experienced team members is Swede Rickard Berg. In a former life, he taught British Army soldiers Arctic survival in Canada. In the beginning, it will be hellish. Yeah, we're going to do even steeper in the next few days than this. But as soon as we're up on the plateau, it will be more straightforward. Yeah. Then we go south for a while on the plateau and we will come down on the east coast and then it will be completely untrodden land, not known at all. No one has ever been, meaning that we don't really know. But I've seen from like Google Earth and the pictures of the place, uh, satellite photos, and it, it looks hellish. 
The team are expecting to be on the ice for around 40 days and in early January they'll stop at a spot near the Weddell Sea to raise a toast to the legendary Antarctic explorer Sir Ernest Shackleton, marking the 100th anniversary of his last ever expedition. Shackleton's granddaughter Alexandra Shackleton is one of the expedition patrons. The other is Lieutenant General Richard Nugie, author of the MOD's strategy on climate change and sustainability, who's travelled here with the team to see them off. So, I've walked up this little hill um, four times now, and I'm knackered. And I'm not pulling a pulk. All I've done is taken some rucksacks and taken one or two other things up there. And, I, and um, they've set up a tent uh, which they had to dig in um, to make sure that there's a, a snow uh, trough so that you can cook. Um, and all around the tent is snow, and you do that every time. So that's just really knackering, just digging the, uh, the snow. Now that's, we've done that, we've been here three or four hours, that's it maximum. And I'm thinking, you know, that's quite hard work. And I'm not fit, but that's quite hard work in its own right. And then on top of that, you, they're going to do the science. And I just think that the, res the, the resolution being the sort of resolute, that the military brings, it's not only the military, but the military does bring that. It means that actually these people who've all got military backgrounds, military experience, um, they, they know what they've got to do and they just get on with it. But it just shows that um, we can have an enormous effect um, in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, the, the amount of emissions that we're doing um, up in the UK has an effect on here. Um, and that's what we've got to try and reduce, so that we don't damage this place more than we've done so already. During the next month, the team will have to deal with crevasse fields, sub-zero temperatures and 100 mile an hour winds as they enter an area of Antarctica where no human has gone before. The same adventurous spirit that guided Shackleton more than a century ago, now being used to help us understand more about climate change and the effects it's already having on this most beautiful of continents. Simon Newton, Forces News, Portal Point in Antarctica. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel.